three-man booth NFL Week 15. I'm Dan Salem with Phil and Bud. Fantasy playoffs for many, almost for me. We are doing really well on our ATS picks, much better than our home teams. <laughs> Phil, you, you bet against the Giants last week. Are you going to do it again here in Week 15? Unless Daniel Jones's neck is going to make a, reco- a remarkable recovery, absolutely, because Mike Glennon just, man, it is it is harsh to watch. I got to see some of it. They were playing the Chargers. It was pretty pathetic. <laughs> oh, it's it's just it's unwatchable. It's 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 you know, thank God there's only four games left. And I say it every week. Thank God for fantasy and sports betting because this season is just it's gone. It's it's a wash. So give me Dallas and I will lay the ten and a half points against the Giants this week. That's for sure. Then in a little I'm sorry, bit, did you just say that you were taking the, the Cowboys? Yes. You did. I like the Colts over the Patriots. I know the Patriots look good. They're not going to win every game till the end of the season. Colts are rolling. But I'm going to go with that because I'm piggybacking on Phil's Dallas Cowboys pick. I'm laying the points with the Cowboys also. <laughs> I, I just think the Giants are trying to lose out for a top or higher draft pick. They need to replace their Mike Glennon quarterback. So <laughs> I'm going to go with the Cowboys. And then I'm taking the Tennessee Titans. They are giving like a point and a half against the Steelers. And the Steelers are not a very good football team. Tennessee's heading to the playoffs. That's a pretty easy pick for me. I don't know why the line's so low. Well, because the Steelers made that little bit of a rally last week and and could have won the game, but they didn't. That's because Minnesota doesn't know how to close. I am taking um, the Dolphins. I'm going to lay the eight and a half points because the Jets. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And I am going to take the Chargers over the Chiefs on Thursday night football. I think the Chiefs are uh, winning football games with smoke and mirrors right now. Uh, Their offense is not good. Um, Their defense has been touted as rebirthed, if that's even a word. Uh, But I think that, I mean, they're playing mediocre opponents, yeah, offenses. And I think the char- I think the Chargers they're on a little bit of a run right now. I think you saw it last week against the Giants. Justin Herbert is unbelievable. The way Patrick Mahomes is playing right now, he's just not playing consistent. Something's off. His mechanics are off. He's yeah, he doesn't have any time. I don't think he trusts his offensive line. His offensive line is terrible, and that's only a three point spread. So I, which is basically like a pick 'em. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the uh, I'm gonna go with the Chargers and 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 take the points. So you say you know. They've been playing with smoke and mirrors. Chris Jones was out for a bunch of games. He came back and the defense match and started playing better. That's not a coincidence. He, he's, he's a really good player, but he's out on the COVID list. So I, I like that Chargers pick. I'm going to roll right into Justin Herbert. I, I get to watch a lot of Justin Herbert. I got to watch him shred the Giants. He just throws such a perfect pass. It reminds me of like the tape of Zach Wilson from college. Cause you know, everyone looks good in college, right? But Herbert makes him look, makes it look that good and that easy in the NFL. I just wish we had that with our NFL quarterback. But I want to I want to throw this to you because you've gotten a lot of Zach Wilson this season. I, I'm a big believer in the eye test. His stats aren't terrible. I mean, he's a rookie. It's it's obviously a dramatic learning curve for him. Um, I don't think I think it would have done well for the Jets to have a veteran quarterback and have him sit for a little bit. But that's just not how the NFL works anymore. I don't know what the deal is. He he can't make any throws and, and, and it's not like, it's not like his offensive line is terrible. You know, it's, it's certainly not great, but there, there are passes that the three of us can make. And, and I know that I say that that frequently, but I, I like to think that I'm not exaggerating. If, if there was somebody who was 10 yards to my right, who was wide open, I wouldn't throw it into the ground for four yards short of him. It didn't help him that he that Ty Johnson uh, dropped three passes that would have been first downs. Um, you know, that doesn't get the offense in a rhythm. He's staring down his receivers. All the defenders know exactly where he's throwing the ball and he's double clutching that one yeah. that he that he waited for in the end zone. If he had thrown the ball as soon as he he planted his back foot as a touchdown. These sound like he's in his head a little bit. I wonder because I watched him a bit at the beginning of the season. And I didn't, I didn't see these things from him. I actually liked him. I liked what I saw. I thought he passed the eye test, right? Now he has, then he has a knee injury. Now, if his knee's still bothering him, that's going to affect his ability to plant. It's going to affect his hips and his ability to, to throw, throw accurately. And if he's in his head about his hip 
and his knee, then he's going to miss these passes. And he's, these are split second decisions. And he didn't throw it off the plant. He waited and then he missed. And then, like you said, the defender caught up. I, the only the only winnable game that they they have on their schedule is against Jacksonville because J- Jacksonville is an absolute dumpster fire. That's the one thing you could say for the Giants. It seems like the team likes Joe Judge, even though they suck and Mike Lennon can't play. So I, I'm going to throw it over to you because we're talking about the eye test for Zach Wilson. The eye test for Saquon Barkley is not good right now. I, uh, I lost last week. No, it's not. It, the only reason he had a decent fantasy week was because of garbage time. It, he might still be hurt. And I, he's playing through it also, and it's he might. not pretty. He might, but their their offensive line sucks. I mean, their offensive line sucks. Has been sucking for three years, and they haven't gotten it fixed. Whose fault is that? Well, that's Gettleman, but he's he'll be gone at the end of the year. Well, well, what worries me about Barkley is when he before these last two injuries, he had this explosiveness that made him special, and I haven't seen it yet since he's been back. But you know what? At the same point, at the same time. What's, what's he going to break his, you know, break his back for? The team's not going anywhere. Well, he's, he's he needs to break his back for uh, a contract, dude. Does he, though? Right, because right. Does he? Well, he's going to want Zeke money. I hope they don't, and I hope he's not greedy like Zeke was, because look how that's working out for, for You Zeke. actually think he's going to stick around for less than the amount some other stupid team's going to pay him. The, the Jets paid Le'Veon Bell, and that was a terrible mistake. The Cowboys paid Zeke, and that's going to be terrible for them next season. Uh, it's terrible for them this season. Bark- we, we, everyone knows Barkley's good. All right, we, don't, we don't have to debate that. but Everyone knows Barkley was good. Point is, when you, yeah. when you pay a running back that kind of money, eventually you have to pay some quarterback, right? Look, look, at, look at Russell Wilson in Seattle. He's getting all this money. He, he's got nothing him because no one they can't afford anybody it's a catch-22 because i mean these players you're in a team sport right but the stars of every other league get huge money the stars of the nfl gotta get huge money but you cripple your team unless you're like a genius gm brady keeps winning brady keeps restructuring his contract so that way all the pieces around him can fit and it's it's so obvious what he's doing and it's he, he restructures in the long run he restructures but he does not take a pay cut so i mean He's willing to work with the teams, which is great. I mean, I think all players should do that. But he's no, not. But Tom Brady was never the highest paid quarterback in, in the league. Ever. No, but he was always top five. But, but he was never the highest, though. Well, right, because that wasn't more important to him than winning. Agreed. No, that's, that's, that's my point. He, he's going to win the MVP this year. Yeah, I think so. I think so. He's, he's I mean, I hate to say it, but he's, he's awesome. You look at, look at the Jets and the Giants, right? You think you got two young, good quarterbacks, the whole nine yards. And then you look at Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, who are now granted, they are in a, in a class of their own, but they make the game look so effortless and easy every single week. Is it coaching? Is it just, uh, you know, what is it? Because t- Tom Brady was drafted in the seventh round. So obviously nobody thought that he was going to be any good. When you get paired with, the great one of the greatest coaches of all time. It's definitely going to make you a great player if you want to be. Right. You know, the only saving grace of this season is that the Bears keep losing. The Giants have that number one pick, and I think we talked about it last week. Russell Wilson wants out of Seattle. You're going to have to mortgage the future for a 37 year old quarterback, 36 year old quarterback. It might be worth it. You know, this reminds me of when the Jets signed Brett Favre, and it was so much fun until it wasn't. I mean, they they almost they, did they make the playoffs? I think they almost made the playoffs. I mean, I would expect they lost the to the Dolphins in the last game of the season to Chad Pennington. Oh, there we go. <laughs>